Mabior Garang. Do I call you Captain Mabior Garang? No, I'm no longer in the army, so I'm You're no longer in the army. Yes, Mr. Mabior. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I'm going to start by taking you to a history of South Sudan that was actually founded by the late Dr. John Garang, who happens to be your father. Uh, how would you describe his struggles to form the current South Sudan? Um, I would describe them as misunderstood mm -hmm. because uh, something happened in South Sudan where it became, the argument became unity versus secession. And Dr. John Garang is always painted in the context of he wanted the unity of the Sudan. But uh, that is not really an accurate description. And in this also is part of why South Sudan is in the crisis that it's in. Because of the lack of understanding of this uh, vision, which he called the vision of New Sudan. Mm -hmm. And uh, this vision was about uh, managing diversity. And the independence of the South is, uh, is, is, is a popular will of the people. So it has nothing to do with the opinion of Dr. John Garang. He, his opinion was that this would be uh, the independence of, of the South or the unity of the country would be determined through the popular will of the people. So it's not something that you need to go and shout all over the world that we want independence, we want independence. Mm -hmm. what, what you need to fight for is, is, is the mechanisms by which you get this independence. And the vision of the new Sudan still uh, applies to the diversity of South Sudan. So when you get an independent South Sudan and then you call the vision of the new Sudan those things of John Garang of the past, uh, the country is not united, we are now a separate South Sudan, we don't need that vision. Mm -hmm. And you throw away a, a vision of managing diversity, then what will end up happening? The same formula of the old Sudan where one community imposes their cultural uh, aspects on the rest of the diversity of the country is what happens. Right. As, as a son of the founding father, do you think that his dreams have been watered down and what we're seeing in South Sudan is a completely different story? Yes, uh, it, it, it has been watered down, but it has been watered down among the political class, mm -hmm. among, the, among the ordinary citizen that is still suffering, some, in some cases an even worse uh, repressive system than the Arab occupation. They still have the, the ambition and the, and the, and the vision and, and, the, and the yearning to to want to be free, which is what they wanted to begin with. So, yes, it has been watered down among the political class that maybe did not understand and have not articulated well the vision. But among the people of South Sudan, the vision st is still strong and they still want freedom and they, they still want uh, clean water, they still want uh, access to health care, they still want access to education, they still want to raise their families in dignity. So among the, among the people, it's still, it's still there, but among the political leadership, it has been watered down. Right. Among the political leadership, it has been watered down, like you say. Now, uh, from the time uh, that Dr. John Garang passed, you know, second in command, I should say, was uh, President Salva Kiir. And since that time, uh, Mama Rebecca was interviewed recently by an international media, and she mentioned that there's not one tarmac uh, road in, in South Sudan. Can, I, can we say the outskirts of Juba? What do you make out of this? Uh, do you think that South Sudan is in a really bad place, that there's, they're at a point of no return? Well, no, I don't think South Sudan is at a point of no return, because the problem is not... South Sudan in terms of the ground or the people of South Sudan. The problem is a, is a, is a, is a failure of leadership. And leaders come and go. Uh, right? The current leaders who are now in Kenya, in Tanzania, in, in South Sudan, in Uganda, will not be here forever. And so, Salfa Fakir will come and go, Dr. Riek Machar will come and go, the people mm -hmm. of South Sudan will remain there forever. So, another, the people of South Sudan are now struggling, and out of this struggle I do believe that uh, we, we, will, we will transform the situation and, and turn this tragedy into an opportunity for bringing about fundamental change in the country.